Hey guys, welcome to HD Movie Recaps. Today I'm going to show you a movie called The Cobbler. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. At the start of the movie, an ordinary looking cobbler uses a sewing machine to fix a shoe of his rich customer. However, when he tries on the shoes, he shockingly turns into the rich man and starts driving around the city in a luxurious car. Then he starts mending another pair of shoes. But what he doesn't realize is that they belong to his old customer who has already died. Low. And behold, he tries on the shoes and this time transforms into the dead man. With this attire, he scares off a bunch of gangsters and causes their car to collide against an oncoming traffic. Surprisingly, he is left unharmed by the deadly crash. Now, with this newfound ability, he can explore and live any life that he desires to. Following this, the movie flashes back to the 19th century in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. A bunch of concerned entrepreneurs have held a meeting to discuss the skyrocketing rents around the neighborhood, which has already caused several businesses to go bankrupt with no options left. They ask a local cobbler, Pinhas Simkin, for help, who supposedly has some mysterious abilities. The men then hand over Simkin with a pair of shoes belonging to the landlord and request him to do his magic. Although, hesitant at first, Pinches agrees. And then he starts repairing the worn out shoes on his sewing machine, which appears to be very peculiar. The movie then cuts to the present day and we are introduced to the protagonist, Max Simkin, a fourth generation descendant of Pinhas. He is the same guy from the opening scene who has yet to realize his magical powers. Just like his ancestors, he has inherited the cobbler shop and works very hard for a living. Max lives with his old and sick mom, Sarah, in a tiny apartment, and it is revealed that his father left them years ago. As for his acquaintances, he's close to a barber named Jimmy, who has a shop right beside Max apostrophe S.1. Day. As Max is going about with his day, he enters his shop. She introduces herself as Carmen, a social worker who works for the welfare of the tenants in the Lower East Side due to the continuous encroachment by luxury real estate owners. Some people are forcefully being evicted. Hence Carmen is going door to door with a petition so that the government will intervene and stop the rich owners from harassing the poor tenants. Although Max doesn't care much about the cause, he finds Carmen cute and signs the petition for her. The following day, a rude guy named Ludlow enters the shop and demands Max polish his shoes, to which the latter agrees. Once done, he is impressed by Max's work and leaves another pair of shoes to have them fixed out after. Ludlow leaves, Max immediately gets to work and starts mending the shoes. However, to his misfortune, his electric sewing machine experiences a malfunction, rendering it useless. He tries calling for a repairman, but everyone seems to be busy that week, hence left with no other option. Mac heads down to the basement and starts searching for a sewing machine that is still operable. Eventually finds one, the same one his ancestor, Pinhas, used at the start of the movie, wasting no time. Max operates the old machine and starts mending the shoes. After he finishes up, he heads upstairs and innocently tries on the expensive shoes. And as soon as he does so, he surprisingly transforms into Ludlow. Taken aback, Max quickly takes off the shoes, and with this he reverts back to his original form. He then tries on another pair of shoes from his shop, but nothing happens with those. After thinking about it for a while, it finally dawns on him that the transformation takes place only when he mends shoes with his vintage ancestral sewing machine. To test his theory, he closes up shop and begins to repair some old shoes using the vintage sewing machine. Then he tries them on one by one and transforms into a completely different person every time. Now Max can finally change his boring life around and to become anybody he wants to be. In one instance, he transforms into a Chinese man and walks around Chinatown. In another instance, he dines at a lavish restaurant and leaves without paying by changing his appearance. He also changes into a rich man and drives his luxury car around the city. In this way, Max's monotonous life suddenly becomes colorful after he discovers his ancestor's magical machine. The next morning, while he's working at a shop, a beautiful lady named Taryn arrives and asks him to fix her boyfriend, Emiliano Shoes. Oh, boy. Max is instantly captivated by her beauty, so he thinks of a plan. Using the magical machine, he changes into Emiliano. He turns out to be a handsome young man and goes to a local bar. There he becomes the center of attraction of all the girls present inside. This motivates Max, and he heads straight to a millionaire's apartment where he finds Taryn taking a shower. Surprisingly, she becomes excited and calls him to take a shower with her. Max immediately accepts, but when he realizes that taking off his shoes will revert him back to his original form, he makes various excuses and flees with days passing by. Max also starts growing an infatuation for Carmen, and he stalks her using various disguises. That night, he happily approaches his mother and asks her if she wants to be somebody. Sarah replies no but expresses her desire to meet her husband just once. Hearing this, Max gets an idea in his mind. The following night, he arranges a romantic dinner for Sarah and also buys a lovely dress. 
As she is busy getting ready, he transforms into his father and approaches her. As expected, the innocent old woman is delighted to reunite with her husband after years. He doesn't ask much about his whereabouts and simply enjoys the moment. The two then have dinner, talk about their early days, and also dance. Max, in the form of his father, then takes Sarah to bed and remains by her side until she falls asleep. Unfortunately, the next morning, Max finds out that she has passed away peacefully in no time. A lot of people gather at the place to commemorate Sarah's life, but Max is too distracted for it. He blames himself internally for his mother's loss, seeing him upset. Jimmy tries to cheer him up, but Max simply leaves without speaking a word. Despite the tragedy, he returns to work the next day. The first customer is Ludlow, who has come to retrieve his shoes. However, since he has lost his receipt, Max refuses to hand him the shoes, claiming that it's hard to find a pair among thousands. Expectedly, this angers the arrogant customer, and he threatens Max to find the shoes by the evening or else there will be trouble. Never get between a guy named Ludlow and his shoes. After Ludlow leaves, Max immediately decides to take revenge for the humiliation he just suffered. He covertly follows Ludlow by changing appearances various times. Along the way, he finds out that Ludlow is a gangster who makes a living by threatening and beating up others. Shortly after Ludlow reaches his apartment, but swiftly leaves with his guys for some business, taking this as the perfect opportunity. Max disguises himself as Ludlow and enters his apartment to steal whatever valuables he can get his hands on. There he encounters Ludlow's angry girlfriend who is about to move out of the place because of the constant abuse she has suffered over the years. Once he is alone, Max starts searching the place and finds a secret suitcase which is loaded with weapons. He picks up a fancy taser gun and attempts to play with it, but ends up tasing himself to unconsciousness. Few hours later, he wakes up and prepares to leave. But unfortunately, Ludlow arrives at the same time. The gangster is shocked to see his doppelganger and immediately starts strangling him, while Ludlow's into some kinky stuff. But luckily, Max is kept to the taser gun, which he uses to knock the real Ludlow out. When he wakes up, he finds himself tied up to a chair. Soon, Max approaches him as a transgender man and starts threatening for some valuables left with no option. Ludlow leads him to a secret vault which contains some expensive watches. Just then, a few guys arrive outside the door who are revealed to be Ludlow's gang members. At first, Max gets scared that he will get caught, but when Ludlow spills the beans, that the men are here to escort him to collect 50 grand from someone, he becomes confident. He then disguises himself as Ludlow approaches the gang members and sets off with them, leaving the original Ludlow unattended. Along the way, one of the gang members mentions that he has a surprise for his boss, aka Ludlow, and takes him to a secret garage. There, some of his other gang members have imprisoned and beaten up a guy named Patrick who is supposedly trying to steal from them. Seeing all the blood and violence, Max becomes disoriented and heads to the bathroom. After recuperating for a while, he comes out and orders his men to release the culprit, claiming that everyone deserves a second chance. As expected, the goons are surprised as they're not used to seeing their boss pardoning anyone. But when Max insists, they agree to let Patrick go. Following this, Max and the thugs continue their journey and reach a large mansion, which belongs to a real estate owner named Elaine Greenewald. Without further ado, she hands over an envelope containing 50 G's to Max, i.e. Ludlow and orders him to finish off the target. The latter pretends to know the work and leaves confidently with his man. Unfortunately, when Max returns back to the apartment in his transgender disguise, Ludlow is waiting for him with a gun. The gangster then tries to choke him to death, but Max cleverly takes off one of his shoes and reverts back to his original form, startling Ludlow taking advantage of the opportunity. Max tries to escape, but ends up inadvertently stabbing Ludlow in the neck with his pointed stilettos as the gangster slowly passes away. A terrified Max flees from the scene. However, the very next morning, he heads straight to the police station to turn himself in after taking all his statements. Some policemen arrive at the apartment with Max, but lo and behold, there is not a single sign of the murder. Ludlow's body, the blood marks, the money, and even the guns have all disappeared. Max tries his best to convince everyone that he is telling the truth. But due to the lack of evidence, the officers leave after a while. Max returns to his shop and gets taken aback to see the money and guns lying on the table set up with everything happening around him as of late. He grabs everything and prepares to leave. But just then Jimmy stops him. He expresses his concern that Max has been acting really weird since his mother's demise, and he is always absent from his job. However, the latter pays no heed to the speech and continues on his way. In the next scene, Max heads to Elaine's mansion disguised as the transgender man. He makes up a story that Ludlow is incapable of executing the mission, so he has sent him to return the money. However, Elaine clearly sees through his lies and orders her men to knock him out. That night, when Max wakes up, he is being transported by two men inside the car. They appear to be talking about burning up an apartment. 
They also discuss the different ways to execute the transgender man. And hearing this, Max quickly tries on a pair of shoes and transforms himself into a dead man. Seeing him, the men get terrified and end up crashing the vehicle, allowing Max to flee the next morning when he reaches his shop, notices a flyer that Kerman left for him earlier on, going through it. He, realizes that the tenant she's fighting for, Solomon, is the same guy Elaine's men were talking about. Worried he quickly heads to Carmen's office to discuss the situation through her. He learns that Elaine is a wealthy businesswoman who wants to demolish an apartment and build a department store there. So far, she has managed to buy all of the tenants there, but Solomon is unwilling to move. Later, the two head to Solomon's place and tell him everything about how Elaine and her men are planning to kill him. But surprisingly, the old man still refuses to go away, claiming that he has a lot of memories in the apartment hearing. This, Carmen becomes sad, but just then, an idea crosses Max's mind. The next morning, he meets Elaine disguised as Solomon and proposes a deal. He will leave the place in exchange for 100 grand and a ticket to Chicago where he can meet his daughter. Elaine immediately agrees and leaves the place to make the necessary arrangements. That evening, two of her men, Jeffrey and Brian, arrive at Solomon's apartment to hand over the money. As everyone is busy, Max cleverly hides their shoes and sets his plan in motion. First, he disguises himself as Jeffrey and calls Elaine mentioning that Solomon has left with Brian. Shortly after, when the real Jeffrey returns to Solomon's apartment, Max disguises himself as Brian and knocks him out. Elsewhere, the real Solomon is with the real Brian. But as soon as they reach the airport, the police apprehend Brian, after finding a weapon on him. The following day, Carmen bumps into Elaine and tells her that she just visited Solomon. Hearing this, the cunning woman is in disbelief as Jeffrey had informed her that Solomon had left for Chicago the night before. She rushes to the apartment to see for herself and finds the man still there. In reality, it is just Max, disguised as Solomon, enraged. Elaine threatens to kill Solomon and his daughter if he doesn't leave right away. But to her misfortune, a group of reporters barge inside the room. It turns out that the whole thing was just an elaborate setup to frame Elaine for her wrongdoings. That evening, after successfully imprisoning Elaine, Max and Carmen catch up and agree to go on a date on the weekend. The same night, Max disguises himself as Ludlow for one last time to approach his girlfriend. He hands her over some of Ludlow's watches so that she can sell them and earn a decent amount. Unfortunately, when she is returning, Patrick and his men apprehend him and start driving away. But before they can get very far, an oncoming truck crashes into them. When Max wakes up, he finds himself in Jimmy's barber shop. The latter reveals that he pulled him out of the car wreckage and brought him here confused. Max inquires as to why he always looks after him. And in response, Jimmy takes off his shoes and changes into his real self. In a shocking turn of events, it is revealed that Jimmy is none other than Max's father, Abraham, as Max watches in disbelief. The old man reveals that he had to hide himself to keep his family safe as some really bad people were after him. Then he leads Max to a secret compartment where hundreds of luxurious shoes are being kept. Each and every one of them was worn by a noble person from a different decade. Abraham then reveals that disguising oneself is in the Simkin family's blood, and now it's Max's turn to lead that life. Then the father-son duo emerge from the back entrance where a lavish car and a driver are waiting for them. The movie ends as they talk about the magical sewing machine and how it came into existence. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.